Hey everybody, welcome back. In this video, uh, we're going to go through uh, making or implementing uh, configuration changes using a TCL script or Tickle script. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, change the change the IP address and route process uh, for OSPF uh, between router one and router two uh, across gig zero zero. Uh, we're also going to simulate the router one being a single threaded connection off of router two. So I've gone ahead and shut down gig zero one and gig zero two off of router one. So let's go ahead and take a look at the configurations uh, that we have right now. So on router one, let's do a show run interface gig zero zero. And you can see currently we're running a 10.1.2.1 slash 30 network. Uh, we're running an OSPF network type of point-to-point uh, point and a show IP OSPF neighbor shows us that we only have router 2 as a neighbor currently and if I show our IP interface brief you can see everything shut down except for our loopback interfaces and uh, gig zero zero okay so we're gonna update the IP address space between these two routers we're gonna we're gonna change it to a space that uh, we don't know about yet or have not uh, implemented yet uh, so if we do a show run and section our router ospf configuration we'll see that the only network statement that we currently have is the 10 network uh, 10 0 0 0 uh, slash 8 uh, network is the only one that we have underneath our process id Okay, so we're going to add, uh, so there's a few things that we're going we're to have to do. So we're updating the IP address on interface uh, gig 00. Uh, we're going to use uh, 192.168.1.1. Uh, 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 it's going to be a slash 24. Uh, so that's going to be a major change here. Uh, we're also going to update our network type from point to point to point to multi point. And then, of course, we're going to have to add that network statement uh, for that 24-bit network underneath our uh, OSPF process as well. So let's take a quick look at router 2. Uh, show, show run interface. Gig 0, 0. We've got the other side of that connection. Uh, 1011 or 10122 and show IP OSPF neighbor shows us that we have three neighbor relationships off of uh, router two. Uh, the one that we're mostly concerned about is our single threaded connection over to router one now. And then uh, show run pipe section router OSPF lets us see what we have and we need to make sure again we add our 192.168 network underneath our process ID okay so we know that when we go through this uh, let me also make sure we don't have any uh, other routing capability on this device uh, uh, as far as a fail uh, fail safe for like a default route uh, we're going to type in include IP IP route okay so there is one in there we're going to go ahead and remove that uh, config T we're going to say no that to our memory exit out show run pipe section or include IP route okay we have no static routing on this device either 
So like I said, when we, when we implement the changes uh, that we're thinking about putting in place, uh, we are gonna lose OSPF access, uh, which means we're gonna lose management access to that device as well uh, when we're SSH'd from router two to router one. So let's go ahead and bring up the configuration, uh, the, the scripts that we're gonna use uh, for router one and router two. Uh, as you can see, uh, Again, we start off with uh, the TCL SH uh, to open our shell. Uh, we're gonna put a file on the flash that we're gonna use to uh, execute the commands that we want to implement. Uh, and again, the reason that we're doing this, we know that we're gonna lose access to router one uh, based on changing IP addresses and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, so a simple cut and paste uh, from a notepad document into this device is gonna not uh, not work uh, like we want it to. So that's where the TCL script comes into place. It, it keeps running on the box even though you lose access to the device. Uh, makes those changes and if everything goes well, uh, brings our access back up and we're, we're good to go. Okay, so again, we're writing a file uh, to the flash of router one, update router one IP address dot TCL uh, or W plus to write to that file, a uh, little description on what we're doing, and then we go into our config commands. So the, to, in order to implement configurations, uh, we do iOS underscore config. Uh, and then anytime that we're making changes uh, to say a interface or a section of the command, like the, the OSPF process, you always wanna make sure you start with wherever you want to make those configuration changes underneath. Uh, so every time we make a different uh, change, now again, we can, we can put all this on one line and just do interface gig zero zero, <coughs> put the address in here, <coughs> as well as uh, the IP OSPF network statement uh, could be over here. Uh, I like to keep things neater, uh, a little tidy. Uh, I don't like to go too far uh, to the right when I'm uh, writing my scripts uh, for TCL. Uh, so I, I use multiple lines uh, from time to time, depending on how many configurations that need to be put in place. So we start off with iOS config, uh, interface gig 00. We set our IP address information here. Uh, everything's within double quotes. Uh, this is mandatory on the tickle scripts. Uh, then the next thing we're gonna do is set the OSPF network type. Uh, so the next, next line is iOS config. Again, we start out with uh, interface gig 00, so we know, so the script knows where it's writing to and what we're writing underneath gig 00, which is the IP OSPF process, or IP OSPF network point to multipoint, uh, which we're changing from point to point. Uh, then again, we had to make sure that we were adding that network statement uh, under our OSPF process, so again, Underneath the, underneath the OSPF process, we need to make sure that that's where we're at. So we say router OSPF 100, and then we say network uh, 192.168.1.0 with a 24-bit mask, and we're gonna advertise that into area zero. And then we're gonna write, write that to memory, okay? Uh, once that is done, then TCL quit uh, exits, exits out of the uh, tickle shell. All right, same thing on router two, uh, and then all we need to do is just cut and paste these configs onto the devices and get them ready to go. This is a good, uh, a good thing to probably add into your change management process. Um, you could have all this information documented and ready to go, uh, drop these uh, scripts on your devices, and as soon as your uh, changes are approved by your change management board. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, schedule your uh, schedule your work to be done and just execute your scripts and have everything configured and ready to go. Okay, so we've cut and paste those two scripts onto router one and router two. I'm gonna move this down out of the way. A simple dir shows us that that file has been written. And again, in order to view files on the flash, <coughs> use the more 
uh, more flash and the file name. We can see those information is there, what we're going to be writing uh, to that configuration. Now let's take a look at router one. Enter on there. There's our file. Again, we we'll just want to make sure that everything looks good. So we say more flash and the file. Everything looks good there. So we should be ready uh, to implement those changes. So we got the approval from our uh, uh, config management uh, board. Uh, they approved the changes and we're ready to implement. Uh, so we're going to simulate, like I said, uh, doing this remotely. So we're on router two. We're going to SSH over to router one with our NetOps account. Password is Cisco. Okay. And we're on router one. Okay. So let's do a dir again to get that file name. And then we're going to go ahead and say TCL SH flash and the file name. And you're going to see that once I, once we hit enter, it's going to start making those changes and we are going to lose access. And what I'll do is I'll go over, I'll pop over to router one and we'll see uh, that the OSPF process changes and the interface changes uh, take place. So you can see now those changes are being worked and I think we've lost access. So if we go to router one, we can see those changes have been implemented. Uh, we've uh, logged those configurations. And if we do a show run interface gig zero zero, we can see now we're running 192.168.1.1. Uh, we are now uh, network point to multipoint. Again, that's a 24-bit mask. And then I show run Python section router OSPF. And that has been added to our, uh, that network statement was added to underneath our uh, OSPF process. Okay, you see we've lost completely lost connectivity to our <coughs> router one. Okay, had a little trouble with uh, with router two. It kind of locked up on me when I, we lost access to router one. Uh, but again, we still have the configuration on router one. Um, nothing has changed there. Uh, show run interface gig zero zero. You can see we're, we're still 192.168.1.1 and multi point uh, network type. Our OSPF configuration <coughs> uh, network statement is still there. And uh, we're back in router two. And uh, let's show the directory on here and get ready to implement the changes. Uh, so we tickle uh, TCL SH uh, to the flash. And the file that we want to run. Okay. Once we implement those changes, we should see our OSPF process uh, neighbor relationship come back up on gig zero zero over to zero one. And there it is. So if we show IP OSPF neighbor, and you see we've got three neighbor relationships. We're back neighbored again with router one, but we're now <coughs> neighbored on it's a new IP interface, uh, IP address on that interface, 192.168.1.1. Uh, if we show run, uh, it's gig zero, gig 
zero, zero. See that the configuration was made uh, for the IP address as well as the network type. And then share on section router OSPF. And there's our network statement here. So as you can see, a, a very useful uh, tool to have, especially if you're dealing with a lot of uh, remote sites or uh, changes that uh, you know are going to be uh, disruptive to the management access of a uh, network router or switch. So you, know, you could be changing uh, management VLANs on your uh, switches uh, using TCL. You can make those changes and still regain access to those devices uh, once they are once they're implemented so again hopefully this has been an informative video uh, thanks for watching and uh, be sure to like and subscribe to get notified of new content